One of the most annoying things I have to deal with in the shop is this stupid shop back hose. Because of the rib design of the hose itself, they always get caught on the edge of my workbench whenever I'm trying to use something like a sander, and it's really annoying. So that's why I created this movable boom arm that'll keep both your power cord and your shop back hose easily out of the way and allow you to do whatever task you need to do. Hi, my name is Eric Spensley, and today I'm going to show you how you can create this super simple boom arm to put in your shop on Spensley Design Co. Right now, lumber prices are absolutely insane. In my area, a four by eight sheet of Baltic birch plywood is $189. Think I'm kidding? Here's the price sheet. That's why I raided my scrap pile and was pumped to see a panel that was the perfect amount that I needed for the project. Now, before I get too deep into the video, I do wanna point out that there are free plans. Yes, I said free. There are free plans for this build linked down in the description. You can thank Craig for sponsoring this video and making those plans free for everybody watching. So instead of having to blast you with an obnoxious ad read about hair loss, life insurance, or shaving specific areas of your body, just check out the free plans link down below on Craig's website and know that all the blue tools that I'm using here today are from Craig. What you've seen me do so far is start breaking down some three quarter inch plywood into strips that are going to make up the main um, I guess, arm? Yeah, let's go with arm. They're gonna make up the main arm of the uh, boom arm. But before we get too deep into cutting a bunch of pieces, let's jump into the SketchUp model to see how all of this is gonna come together. Now this project is really fairly simple, but I still wanted to take a look around the model just so you can really follow exactly what I'm doing throughout the whole video. The main arm is comprised of three separate pieces. The two sides are the exact same, and the one in the middle is slightly wider and slightly shorter. Again, free plans that show all the dimensions and everything else you need are linked down below. Towards the back, there's this small box that allows you to insert your shop back hose and power cord from below, and it also serves as an attachment point to the wall. This box is made from two side pieces, a front panel and a back panel. See, that wasn't too bad. But now that you have a better idea of how this is going to go together, let's jump back into the garage. So focusing our attention back on the main arm, this is probably 100% unnecessary, but because Baltic birch plywood is so dense, I figured it probably wouldn't hurt to drill some holes in it to help reduce the weight. And I wouldn't be a real worker unless I spent a good 30 minutes perfectly laying out where all the holes should be spaced, right? I also think it's really important to mention that this idea spawned off of a video that I saw from John over at Lincoln Street Woodworks. I liked his boom arm and wanted to create something similar for my shop, so check out his channel if you haven't already. With all the holes marked out, I grabbed some scrap pieces of MDF to lay underneath my work pieces so that I didn't accidentally drill into my workbench. And to make sure that the holes matched on both pieces, I stacked them on top of each other and grabbed the dullest Forstner bit I could possibly find to drill out the holes. <laughs> After 45 seconds, I wasn't really making much progress, so I figured I need to switch to a more powerful drill. And instead of putting it in the drill mode, I activate the most obnoxious sound of woodworking, the hammer drill mode. This definitely did work better, but I still only plowed through three holes. That's what she said. In about three and a half minutes. So I figured it was time to call it a loss on that Forstner bit and move on to a spade bit. This was a much better decision. Spade bits are substantially faster, but they're more prone to causing tear out, which is why I typically tend to avoid them. And be smart here, if you're using a larger drill bit, if at all possible, try to use that auxiliary handle that comes with a lot of drills that prevent you from breaking your wrist. Oh, and hearing protection is a must too because, oh my gosh, hammer drills are unbelievably annoying. Alright, now with those holes hogged out, I can suck up all the chippy chips and get back to a regular workspace like magic. And because those pieces were clamped together, the holes are perfectly matched up, but the edges are a little bit sharp around the holes, so I grab my cordless trim router with a quarter inch roundover bit to start breaking the edges on all those holes. Everything was going great until 
the router decided it was done working. Full battery and everything, but it just kept shutting itself off after every hole or so. I think it's time for a new router. I walked across the street to the home center and the nice fella at the counter just handed me a new one without having to deal with the warranty process, which was pretty cool. So I plowed the rest of the holes. That's what she said. And yeah, I know what you're thinking. Eric, Ryobi tools are total garbage and nobody should buy them. Honestly, I couldn't disagree with that more. Sure, they are entry level tools, but they are more than capable of building just about anything. Are there higher quality tools available out there? Of course, but I've used and abused this one for almost three years and for the 50 bucks I paid for it, that's a heck of a value. But if I can't get a free replacement the next time it breaks, I'll likely upgrade. I'm sure people have a lot to say about this, so let me know your thoughts about Ryobi tools down below. Anyway, to attach those pieces of the main arm together, I'm gonna use some pocket holes. This new 720 Pro jig from Craig makes the process super easy and unlike the spade bit that I was using earlier, it has built-in dust collection to keep things super, super clean. Then I'll throw down a little bit of glue action between all of the pieces and secure everything down with the pocket holes. Oh, and make sure to clamp the pieces together to make sure the pocket hole screws don't accidentally shift the pieces as you're driving them in. With the main arm all set, I can turn my focus to creating the rear box structure. These pieces need to be just a little bit more precise, so I'm using my precision miter gauge with built-in stop block. Now stop blocks are super, super handy to have. Not only does the stop block help hold your piece during the cut, but it also allows you to repeat a cut when you need to get the exact same measurement on another piece. All of the pieces for the rear box structure are gonna receive some more pocket holes to help join everything together and just to give it a lot of strength. Since the main arm was finished earlier, I can flip it over and attach the back piece and then slide the other three pieces over top before firing in the rest of the screws. To help prevent any nasty splinters when reaching overhead for the boom arm and to match those holes, I rounded over all the exposed edges. This is a shop project, which means finish is 100% not required. However, I'm gonna use some of this Total Boat Halcyon because it's really durable and dries super, super fast. I got this really cheap spray gun off of Amazon that works fine for shop projects like this. So I just sprayed on a couple coats and then let the finish dry for a few hours. Real quick, if you made it this far in the video, leave a comment down below that says milk. I read every comment that comes through. So when you write milk, it lets me know that you actually watched the video. So if you have any questions or just wanna support what I'm doing here, comment milk down below and I promise I'll get back to you. All right, now back to the build. While the finish dried, I went to the home center and picked up these hinges here, which I can attach to the side of the boom arm. I also got one of these fancy self-centering bits that's perfect for pre-drilling holes in hardware like this. Then I just need to fire in screws to hold all the hinges securely in place before popping this bad boy up on the wall. If at all possible, make sure that you're attaching this directly to a stud. It might work in drywall with the right anchors, but studs are definitely preferred here. And to my surprise, this thing actually worked on the first try. I didn't have to adjust the hinges or anything. I just need to move the wire running to my lights though. I can then run my shot back hose up through the bottom of the boom arm and secure it in place with a couple zip ties. Oh, and I also ran a power cord up there too. But check this out. I can plug my sander into that cord and because the special switch is on the other side, whenever I turn on the tool plugged into the cord, it automatically starts up the vacuum. Then when the tool turns off, the vacuum does too. Pretty cool, huh? Now I totally admit, it is kind of annoying having to toss the hose back up over the garage door tracks when I'm done, but it really only takes a couple seconds. 